Hi there, I am Isaiah of Isaiah's Game Experiments, and I uh, basically do uh, peaceful role playing and retro wargaming. And this is going to be some retro wargaming. This is Panzer General from, I think, 1994. Uh, I pride myself on doing just uh, sort of stuff that nobody else really does on YouTube, so. Uh, Basically, I'm not going to be starting any campaign game. Uh, lots of people have done that before. On the contrary, what I'm planning on doing is uh, actually a little bit of a, shall we say, uh, a tribute series, really, because I found this uh, very interesting uh, Panzer General Let's Play called Mr. Critique 77. And um, He's done lots of the scenarios uh, of Panzer General, and I think the first video that he uploaded to YouTube well over a year ago now was of um, Belarusia, uh, the Soviet thrust to destroy the German Army Group Center, and he kind of uh, showed how. Uh, easy it is, if you know what you're doing, to uh, kind of change history, if you want, in uh, that scenario, um, which is, you know, historically, quite possibly the, um, at least one of the most smashing allied victories uh, in the entire war where historically the uh, uh, Soviet Red Army was able to uh, completely annihilate the uh, German Army Group Center and uh, in just a matter of two weeks a race across the Belarusian countryside and essentially this is where uh, Hitler's um, Eastern Front f completely collapsed um, you may have seen that this starts on the 22nd of uh, July, I believe, in 1944. And that will be Operation Bagration, or however the Russians pronounce that. Um, probably Mr. Critique 77 can pronounce that better than me, even though he's not Russian, supposedly. Uh, but at least he's got a Slavic first language, apparently, which I don't. Um, anyway. Um, Mr. Critic showed how, in this 1994 War Games representation, at least, of that historical battle, um, it's really quite easy to turn the tables on the uh, uh, Russians. Uh, partly because it's a little bit... The, the German armies here are a little bit stronger than they historically were, or quite, quite a lot stronger actually, because, um, well, this is the city of Vitebsk, uh, if we bring up the, the, basically the strategic map again, you can see how, uh, that's the city of Vitebsk, and then the, the Russian, the Russians are here, and the Germans, the grey, units are trying to hold uh, a line and the uh, Russian sort of green yellow red units on the eastern side obviously facing them and the thing is basically the Germans here have quite a lot of uh, tanks quite simply and also some some uh, tank destroyers um, I don't think historically the uh, Germans really had a lot of tanks around the city of uh, Vitebsk uh, not that they didn't have them at all but because they really didn't think the, the German sorry the, the Germans really didn't think that the Russian offensive would really, the, the main thrust would really happen here around the city of Vitebsk in, in Belarus. They thought it would be probably further south in Ukraine or possibly further north because the Soviet army had, had really quite cleverly been able to 
basically dupe the Germans into thinking this was not where they, their heavy armor was needed the most. They would they reinforced basically in 1944 the, the, the southern areas more. So it's quite unhistorical that the presence of a, a, a Tiger II tank here and a, a Panther A tank down here, you know, just south southwest and. and Southwest and northwest of Vitebsk, and also all this, uh, all these powerful heavy tank destroyers like the Elephant and the Yacht Panther, and uh, basically the, the Third Panzer Army that was was here at the time was virtually out of tanks. Also, um, the Germans have in the scenario, uh, well. Their air force is certainly outnumbered, but it's not that that small. Uh, again, historically, the, the the German army in there didn't have a, a lot of Luftwaffe support to, to help them out. So, what I propose to do is to try, basically, to uh, prove that I can, despite these rather unhistorical uh, strengthenings, really, of the... German line. I'm going to try and see if I can uh, win a historical victory here in Belarus. So I'm gonna. What I've done is I've, I've set the uh, uh, the German side to be uh, computer con controlled, and I'm going to control the Soviets basically. And so we're going to get uh, again completely unhistorically. The Germans are going to start on the 22nd of. of July with a counterattack, really. You can see there Focke Wolfs attacking um, Soviet paratroopers here. Um, in case you've never played the game before, I should probably explain a little bit to you as this is going on. You can see here the strength of the units 10. Most units start with a strength of 10. And as uh, as they fight and they take losses, this the strength drops. Although in this case, these Messerschmitt fighters didn't lose any troops attacking the infantry. You can see these tanks are definitely dropping to strength of 6 from 10, getting bombed by those Stugas. Uh, so basically once your uh, unit has dropped to a strength of 0, it is destroyed. And you don't want that, you want to destroy the enemy and not have your own units be destroyed. If your your unit is hurt, it, it is possible to try and replace the losses. If your unit is destroyed, you have to purchase a completely new unit. Ouch! That infantry got completely wrecked by the artillery. And here's more artillery fighting, attacking the Soviet tanks. Oh, that didn't. They only suppressed three people. They didn't actually kill any of those tanks. Oh, this is going to be worse though. Artillery firing on the Red Army infantry. Drops from 12 to 7. Lost about half of his strength to that artillery attack. More of the German artillery attacking. This time up paratroops. That didn't go so badly, actually. Oh, this is already badly damaged. This unit's going to be completely chewed up by this artillery fire, probably. Yep, completely destroyed. So the uh, even the AI is capable of, of, of mounting some pretty powerful counterattacks here, even before the Red Army has actually been able to make its first move, as you can see. Oh, attack! Getting attacked by artillery. Okay, it's lost the strength of one from twelve to eleven. Some units start with a strength of more than more than ten. Okay, this is fairly lucky. We got the first shot here against this. Uh, German infantry, but they're going to shoot back, and to fairly great effect. Okay, this infantry unit, although it's shooting at the same time at least, but it's in a tight spot, because no, it held its own. Oh, the Germans actually took quite greater losses than the Soviets in this battle. Okay, our Soviet tanks getting attacked by uh, Hetzer anti-tanks. Okay, they lost only one. No, that's not good. One was suppressed, that means seven are going to shoot back. Oh, ow, 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 ow. This unit is going to surrender, isn't it? Yeah. Um, basically, there are when a unit shoots on another unit, like here, this artillery is going to be wrecked, attacked by a King Tiger tank. Uh, it drops to six, four is suppressed. That means that leaves two, right? 
because suppressed unit cannot shoot back. If a unit is completely suppressed, that is all its strength is either suppressed or destroyed, it will attempt to retreat, but in this case it can't because there are units behind it, so it surrenders instead. As you can see, especially the German heavy armor counter-attacking uh, takes a terrible toll on the Soviet tanks. Um, when attacked by anti-tanks, they can shoot shoot first and do some damage though. That's a special rule in this game actually, a tank getting attacked by an anti-tank will always shoot first, though not vice versa. Uh, a, um, a tank attacking an anti-tank may shoot after the anti-tank. May. Doesn't have to happen. Okay, German Yacht Panther, our tanks shoot first. Oh, and to surprisingly good effect, only six left, but they're probably gonna shoot very effectively. Yeah. Killed four of the tanks and suppressed three of them. Okay, and finally, Allied turn one. 20 seconds. And let's take a look at the strategic map. Alright, this is the Soviet line. As you can see, basically harassed by German armor all along the line. Let's see. Now, in this game, um, there isn't money as such. There is something called prestige. You can see I've got 1,531 prestige right now. I can use some of that to buy new troops and also to buy uh, replacements for uh, troops that have... Uh, taken losses in combat. Um, I've already lost two infantry, one and one tank in this battle. And there are some units you can see, like this one, uh, dropped to a strength of eight, uh, started at ten, or maybe more than that. Especially this artillery unit is uh, very vulnerable to attacks by this target, so I'm gonna. Mm, do I fire on their infantry first? No, I'll fire on this anti-tank gun. Uh, artillery has the advantage that it can fire at range. Most other units can't do that. So we're going to pull them back. And then we're going to build this infantry unit. Oh, crap on a stick. I was planning on pulling that back onto Neville, but of course I can't do that. <laughs> that does not work, because um, every unit in this game exerts what is known as a zone of control uh, into every hex next to it. So uh, basically this King Tiger, for example, it sort of has partial control over all of these hexes around it and that means that this unit can move into that hex but since that hex is controlled by the King T Tiger tank it can move no further than that basically which is obviously a problem I really wanted to retreat him there, but he can't. I kind of have to pull the artillery out of the way of those heavy, heavy, heavy German tanks. Um, there's really what I really can do to counter the, those heavy tanks are... I mean, ordinarily in the game you would perhaps try and use uh, tactical bombers to weaken them, but the Soviet tactical bombers, at least as represented uh, in the game, aren't really that good. These are the stats for the tactical bombers. Um, if you're new to the game, this may look kind of overwhelming, but it's not as bad, really. It makes sense. Uh, movement is how far it can move, cost is how much money it's worth, or prestige it's worth. Ammo and fuel are fairly self-explanatory. The important thing about uh, aircraft is that uh, you have to get them back to an airfield to refuel, otherwise they fall out of the sky and die, which is obviously uh, kind of stupid. Um, Spotting is a question of how far a, a unit can see. You'll, you'll note that the
these areas are sort of darker than these areas. That's because we, we haven't sort of scouted those areas out yet. I suspect, for example, that there's some artillery here. Which means attacking that infantry with our Soviet infantry is probably going to be even worse than you'd think. Because there's probably some artillery here which will give close support and, and shoot at our infantry as it advances on their infantry positions. Also you may notice that it, at the bottom of the screen it suggests expected losses. Attacker 5 meaning us, Defender 2 meaning them because they are def Defender. So this is a really uh, bad idea. This is even even worse idea as you can see that's sort of suicide basically. And to look a little bit further at the stats, this King Tiger is such a terrible unit. It's uh, by me and I'm by which I mean uh, an absolute terrifying, uh, terrible to the opponent's unit. It's a very good unit, of course, from the uh, German point of view. Uh, it has a ground defense of 21 and an air defense of 14. And that means that's a measurement of how, how uh, tough its armor is, basically, against ground attacks and against air attacks. And 14 is a lot. It's a lot. Uh, conversely, uh, there's to attack to, to defense values. There's also attack values. This is our the bomber I showed you earlier on. It's got a heart attack of seven, and this has got a, a, their defense of fourteen, which means basically they've got twice as much defense. We've got attack. We're not going to do any damage to it whatsoever. Or at least that's what uh, is expected. Actual results will vary quite widely from widely from what um, is expected to happen, but that's what's expected at least. Likewise, um, look at the attack ratings of this unit. 13 soft attack, that's what it uses to attack soft targets essentially. Things like infantry and artillery. And hard attack, that's what it uses against armoured units like, like enemy tanks. 25, that's insane. Let's take a look at the famous uh, T-34 Soviet tank, the way it's represented in the game. It's got a ground defense of 14. Okay, that's considerably less than the uh, German Tiger tank, which makes sense. I mean, the, the Tiger 2 tank was very heavily armoured. Uh, the hard attack is 10, so it'll, it'll basically struggle a lot to penetrate the uh, the, the ground defence of 21, <laughs> which was the, 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 the armour of the German unit. Also of note is initiative. Initiative is 6. Initiative decides how likely a unit is to shoot before the the enemy unit gets to, to fire at all. This dictates who gets to shoot first, quite simply. Look, a Tiger II tank has an initiative rating of 12. That means that it's going to be extremely difficult for the Soviet tanks to get the first shot, or even shoot simultaneously with the Tiger II. The Tiger II tends to shoot first before the before the uh, Soviet tanks can even approach. Now, admittedly, this is a slightly outdated T-34. It's a 1943 version. This is the upgraded uh, 1944 version with a, a better gun. You can see it's got a better hot attack rating, 13 instead of 10, soft attack rating, 10 instead of 8, but it's still got just that initiative rating of 6. It's slightly up better armoured as well. I don't really know why that is. I think, well, presumably they made some changes to it that, that made it slightly more resilient as well. Um, mainly what the Soviets did, historically at least, was fit out their T-34s with, with heavier, heavier uh, armaments, basically. A better gun on, on a new turret. But still, as you can say, not, not expected to do any damage against this Tiger II at all. In fact, the Tiger is expected to completely demolish it. So, <laughs> uh, these Tiger tanks are very, very powerful units. And I mean, I'm not disputing that they were historically, I'm just disputing the idea that they're. that they exist in significant numbers around the city of Vitebsk. <laughs> 
<laughs> at the start of Operation Bagratian. Um, the only Soviet tank that really has any chance whatsoever is this IS-2 tank. And that's not very good either. It's got good attack and defense ratings. Close to the target tank, they're not quite as strong. But look at the initiative. Initiative of 8 against the Tiger 2's initiative of 12. To my experience, basically, if you have three IS-2s, full strength, strength 10, against one Tiger 2, strength 10, then it's a fairly even battle. You could win or you could lose. And you're definitely going to take some very, very heavy, heavy casualties. Um, so, yeah, this unit is a problem. Um, ha, what to do then? I think our first... I'm considering whether to just simply disband this unit because they're going to get just killed anyway and that's going to... Losing units and you're fighting and losing battles does actually cost you prestige. Maybe this infantry unit can move into that city. Um, I've explained, let's see, I've explained about strengths. You can see the strengths uh, of every unit. This is down to 8, which is, means it's it's taken losses, but it's somewhat effective still. I guess what I haven't really explained about uh, uh, is terrain. Uh, this is a city, the city of Neville, and infantry tends to do slightly better in cities uh, than and in forests than in certainly better there than in the clear because basically we've looked at ground defensive air defense what we haven't looked at is close defense uh, in, in a city or a forest hex um, infantry gets to shoot against the close defense rather than the ground defense of an enemy unit if the fighting happens in the city and you can see the close defense of the Tiger 2, for example, is not as good as this ground defense. It's 5 instead of 21. It's still... 5 is an awful lot considering this guy has a hot attack of 2. Also, this artillery should be able to um, provide defensive cover if this infantry unit gets attacked. So I'm kind of betting on that helping, but I may still get completely thrashed in here and this unit you know I'm gonna lose it anyway I might as well just disband it actually um, what to do then essentially we're gonna really weak position here in the north. Around the city of Vitebsk, which is where the historically the closer to the city of Vitebsk, we've got some IS-2s, but only two of them. I'd really prefer three or maybe one of these, two and one of these ISU-121 uh, tank destroyers. And we're not going to be able to cross the river and bring them up against this Tiger because Vitebsk is being held by this uh, German unit. I guess the one statistics I haven't really covered yet is entrenchment. You can see at the bottom right of the screen it says ENT8. That means this uh, unit is dug in very well. In fact, all the uh, German units, apart possibly from some of the tanks that have uh, mounted counterattacks now, uh, are entrenched. That means they've, they've dug in. And an entrenched unit is going to fight better than if it had been un have not been entrenched. Um, also, very importantly, um, if you attack an entrenched unit, you could get a rugged defense, which is kind of like a, an ambush, which is going to be absolutely devastating to the attacker. So, uh, while this might look like a really great idea, we su it suggested that they, the defenders are going to lose 3 and we're going to lose 0. Uh, in actuality, it's not unlikely that we would face a rugged defense here, and if we do, then this uh, German infantry is going to hurt this T-34 a lot more than you'd really expect. Let's take a look at this KV-85 tank. 
right. I'm not sure if it's... I've got this feeling that these Soviet tanks are giving perhaps slightly weaker combat values than they, they were really worth. Um, initiative 6 for the T-34, the KV-85. It's got initiative 7, but that still means it can't compete with the German tanks at all. Take a look at what's happening in the air war. Mr. Critiques, one of his comments early in the game was that he wanted to win the air war. Um, which is, again, something that historically could not really happen, but which is feasible in this scenario. Because the Germans have Flak 18 air defense and several of these Fokker Wolf um, fighters, which are really very good. It's escorting this bomber as well. We can't really do anything there. Uh, the let's see. The the Soviets have a bunch of fighters, but they're not as good. Initiative of six. Remember, initiative decides who gets to shoot first. That's actually that's good. That's as good as this fucker wolf German fighter. But if you look at the combat values, that fighter's got an air attack of twenty and an air defense of fourteen, whereas the these. Uh, Soviet yeah, nines have an air attack of 12 and an air defense of 13. So basically, the arm of the, the guns of these Soviet fighters aren't quite as good as the German ones. They might have a better chance against this Messerschmitt um, 109, which has a lower air attack value. Um, but it's still. Yeah, we expect to take almost as heavy losses as they do, and we could, we may not get, we may have a, if we're unlucky, then they'll shoot first and completely decimate our fighters, so, hmm. Yeah, the, the Germans are, uh, have a fairly strong line here. I think our best bet is to try if we can to punch through in the south here this is the Strela is pretty strong line with entrenchment levels of 5 that's fairly good that's basically as good entrenchments as you could possibly get in the open oh hang on this anti-tank unit f fell back I think after after a, a, an attack that didn't really work out very well. It's out of range of their air defences. I think it's it might be a good idea. Let's see. Can the Soviet Ilyusha bombers... They can hurt it at least. I was really hoping they could wipe it out. What I don't want is it that unit setting up a defensive line here. I've got some partisans in the woods here. Um, I could use them either to try and harass the German defenses around the city of Mogilev. Uh, most importantly, trying to bother their artillery. Or I could sit tight and hope to get attacked and hope for our the entrenchment levels that they've got in there to help them out. Hmm, considering my options here. You know, I should probably consider my options a little bit more and then actually mount, uh, try and mount my uh, offensive. Uh, so as not to waste too much time just looking at what's happening here. Uh, <laughs> I'll be back shortly. <laughs> Until then, go peace and live and live.